Good morning, and welcome to Halifax Community College Clue Lecture Series. This morning, we are proud to have our two of our wonderful Northampton County Commissioners to share with us what we call uh, Local Government 101. And today, Dr. Kevin, Commissioner Dr. Kevin Edwards and Mrs. Geneva, Geneva Riddick Faulkner, a vice chair of the North Hampton County Board of Commissioners. Uh, they will both be with us and they will be sharing and discussing local government, how local government provides for its citizens and career opportunities uh, within local government. Uh, we will begin today First of all, with greetings from our Student Government Association President and College Trustee, Ms. Ashanti Clanton. Good morning. On behalf of the student body, we welcome you to our Local Government 101 Lecture Series. Halifax Community College is a place where learning comes to life in the pursuit of excellence and where education is focused on you. Students here can reach their goals by learning a trade, earning a certificate, diploma, associate's degree, or transferring to a four-year college or university. Halifax Community College has been there for me and our community for 53 years. Thank you for attending today's ceremony. Thank you, President Clanton, for those greetings. Next, Zamaria Clark, a Northampton County early college student, will introduce Commissioner Dr. Kevin Edwards and uh, Kimberly Mack uh, will introduce Vice Chair Geneva Riddick Faulkner. Afterwards, Ms. Mack will give introductions on how viewers can participate in this event today. Following the instructions, the commissioners will begin uh, their presentation. Ms. Matt? I'm, I'm sorry, uh, we're not hearing the speech. I can see, but I can't hear. Dr. Kelvin M. Edwards is currently the Assistant Superintendent of Northampton County Schools. Prior to his appointment as Assistant Superintendent from July 2014 to June 2019, he serves as Deputy Superintendent in Franklin City Public Schools. In addition, he has 27 years of experience working at all levels of public education. He has been a teacher, bus driver, coach, principal, director, and central office senior administrator. Dr. Edwards earned a doctorate in educational leadership from Cambridge College, an educational specialist and licensure from NC State University and Cambridge College, a master's degree from North Carolina A&T State University, and a bachelor of science degree from North Carolina A&T State University. Dr. Edwards is a passionate educator who firmly believes that education is the great equalizer. 
and that greatness is the rightful destiny for all students. Dr. Edwards is a member of the Omega Psi Phi Fraternity Incorporated and a resident of Pleasant Hill, North Carolina, with his wife of 25 years and two children, Kelsey and Kelvin Jr. Good morning. Geneva Riddick Faulkner is the vice chair of Northampton County Board of Commissioners. She was reelected for her second term to serve the citizens of Northampton County from District 2, Rich Square Township. She is happily married to Sean Faulkner. She also has two bonus daughters, Nakari and Caitlin, and one fur baby, Gizmo. She graduated from Northampton County High School East in the class of 1988, West Virginia Wesleyan College in the class of 1992 with a BS degree in secondary mathematics and applied mathematics, and Walden University in 2019 with a master's of education in curriculum, instruction, and assessment. She is currently enrolled in the PhD program focused on curriculum, instruction, and assessment. Mrs. Riddick Faulkner is also a small business owner of the V Resale Boutique on Roanoke Avenue in Roanoke Rapids and an independent consultant with Paparazzi Jewelry. She is currently employed as the Executive Director for Curriculum and Instruction with Northampton County Schools. Her candidate platform and passions are that of improving education, supporting advancement in public safety, increasing tourism, and decreasing real estate taxes. In her free time, she enjoys thrifting and repurposing furniture. Our viewers today will have the opportunity to participate in a question and answer period after hearing from the commissioners. You can submit your questions by clicking on the question and answer icon at the bottom of your screen. President Elam will ask questions on behalf of the viewers. Dr. Edwards and, or I'm sorry, Commissioner, Commissioners Edwards and Riddick Faulkner, the floor is yours. So we look forward to hearing about your presentation. Good morning, good morning, good morning. We bring you greetings from the wonderful land of Northampton County, uh, just across the bridge, just a stone, what they say, a, a, a stone's throw away from where you are there in Weldon, North Carolina at Halifax Community College. We thank you for inviting us to share our um, take on the role of local government from that of the county commissioners. And we'll briefly also talk about municipalities. On the screen, you will see a QR code. If you visit that QR code, that will take you to our Northampton County webpage, where you can find some of the information that we will also be sharing with you today. Dr. Edwards, would you like to share anything before we start? Vice Chair, oh no, 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 thank you. Let's, let's, let's have a great presentation. We're gonna kind of tag team. Um, in, in the role of any organization, there are people that have varying strengths and uh, various interests. So as a board of commissioners, we collaborate and um, some of us work on specific areas in terms of sitting on uh, various boards within our community. Um, and also various boards within our region. So we, we do take our jobs very seriously for that of the citizens of Northampton County. What you'll see on the screen before you now are just a listing of all of the county commissioners that serve Northampton County citizens. District chair, District one is our chair, uh, Commissioner Charles Tyner. Um, I'm the vice chair of the Board of Commissioners, Geneva Riddick Faulkner. Commissioner Nicole Boone is District 3. Um, you will see her down in the bottom left corner. And uh, District 4 in the middle below our logo for our, our seal for our county is Commissioner Joyce Buffalo. 
And uh, Commissioner Dr. Kelvin M. Edwards Sr., who's also joining me today, is in the bottom right, and he serves District 5. I'm hoping that this sound comes through really. Um, it's a very short video from the National Association of County Commissioners. Just give me one second here. Upon the topic, let's see, let me go to the next slide here. Based upon the topics that um, we were asked to speak on today, I think that video kind of captures a lot. Um, it shows the variety of different areas that local government, specifically county government, um, supports, as well as the jobs that are available in county government. Uh, part of Dr. Ed's major responsibilities in Northampton County is that of, in, in his uh, current role at Northampton County Schools, is that of human resources and finding um, different positions, uh, filling different positions is one of his main responsibilities. But in county government, we operate with, with so many different areas that people don't see from maintenance to uh, directors of programs uh, such as finance, uh, human resources, and our county, manage our county manager. Um, just to share a little bit about Northampton County in terms of our local government, Northampton County is, uh, along with the majority of counties in Northampton, in uh, North Carolina, are county manager form of government. So there are two different basic forms of government that a county could operate under. That of a county manager form of government where the county manager um, hires, they handle the day-to-day -day operations of everything that's happening within the organization within the county. And then we also could operate under a form of government where the county commissioners actually handle all of the day-to-day and the chair to the board would serve more as the CEO of an organization would, which would be handling more of the personnel types of issues, uh, managing, monitoring, and evaluating different programs would be that of the, the, the complete board. Um, having a county manager form of government gives us another layer of, of support where when you have one um, person handling the day-to-day, -day, whenever there are any issues that arise and they elevate um, throughout the chain, then you have another layer of individuals to be able to come to, to share your concerns or as well as sharing your thoughts and ideas. Um, we are a very open uh, board of commissioners. We, Although we are meeting virtually at the moment, we still, with public meeting laws, we still allow our citizens to solicit uh, to submit um, questions, concerns, although we do not answer those during our open session, they receive a response later because we always respond as a board of commissioners, not as an individual board when we respond to uh, individual citizen questions. But uh, we give citizens our phone numbers. Uh, citizens are able to you know, email us. Our emails are on our webpage. So we're very open. What you see in the picture on the right is the strategic plan that Northampton County uh, 
Board of Commissioners worked on in 2019. And we typically like to do a four-year plan because within that four years, uh, there would always be at least a set of the commissioners that uh, were part of developing the plan that would be on board just in case there was an election and a commissioner decided not to run or a commissioner was um, replaced by an, another citizen, another uh, commissioner where the citizens elected. There was always people on the board who can explain the passion, the mission and the vision of the board that was um, a part of the strategic plan. And we are happy to say that when we went through and started checking off all of the different um, and I'm not sure if you can see it, but there's little tiny green checks beside lines. We have almost exceeded our goals in many of the areas, and we are almost at the point where our 2023 strategic plan, we're able to check off that we have completed all of those things. And with doing that, it's because we had a plan and we worked that plan and made sure that all of our decisions were rooted in advancing what we saw throughout a very lengthy um, month or so of conversations, but amongst us that would move our county forward. Commissioner Edwards serves District 5 and he has um, those different townships and with county government, in different areas, they might, most people don't even know some of the names of these because they're not names of towns anymore, but they're townships. Um, so back, if you look through history in Northampton County, there were a lot of townships that functioned almost like towns, but as um, population declined and we started to consolidating, uh, that's where you come up with the fewer names that you have of towns. But those are the townships in which Commissioner Edwards serves. And as you'll see, Commissioner Edwards is uh, positioned with Congressman Butterfield. So although we are local commissioners, we still reach all the way up to our national representatives to keep connected in order to provide the most resources that we can and uh, the awareness of the needs in our community with our elected officials that serve us at both the state and the national level. A little bit of general information about county government. Local governments are created or authorized by the state. Um, so we can't exist on our own. We have to operate within the confines of the state of North Carolina in this, in this situation. We often overlap between local issues and broader interests. So there are things in Northampton, such as broadband access, such as healthcare access, that's not unique just to Northampton County, um, but there are uh, issues that are faced in rural America um, and definitely in the uh, Roanoke Valley. So even though we are committed to progressing Northampton County forward, a lot of the work that we do is in conjunction, conjunction and collaboration with a lot of other counties and, uh, and the state as well. We're responsible for and responsive to the people. Um, so we are elected by the people, we're not appointed representatives, and uh, therefore the, the voice of our collective people is what we have to listen to. And that's the wonderful thing about being positioned in various different townships is that um, Commissioner uh, Dr. Edwards, he may attend a social organization function in the township in which he lives, and he, the citizens may talk to him and share ideas or share concerns um, or just ask questions for clarification in his township. I may do the same just by going to the local Dollar General. Uh, people will stop you in the aisle and share their questions, ask for updates on where we are. And of course, things that we share in our public open board meetings, we're able to share with our citizens. Um, and sometimes people are un uncertain as to why we, we cannot share certain things uh, such as projects that might be in economic development. In economic development, it's some of the businesses that we work with in terms of trying to recruit them to come to our communities, they want to keep their, their projects um, as long as they can within the confines of what we have to, when you start to have to do certain things in local government to move it forward. 
because they don't want people to, they want to keep it kind of low and under wraps because they don't want people to steal their ideas um, or to come in and kind of undercut them in a way. So uh, we do share what we can in all of those different areas. We are a very transparent board. Um, it serves the people who live, work, shop, visit or own property within the boundaries. And for us, it's Northampton County. So it's not just about the citizens who live within Northampton County. Anyone who comes through our county for any purpose, we are responsible and we serve those citizens um, and those, those individuals that come within our community. Most local government meetings must be open to the public. And as I mentioned, there are some closed session meetings when it relates to personnel, uh, um, attorney-client privilege. Those are some of the, the types of um, reasons that we might go into closed session. And before we go into a closed session, we always list the general statute that gives us that closed session um, ability. And uh, we have virtual meetings. We were um, in a little bit of feedback. Um, I think someone has an open mic. It's just a little bit of feedback. Um, most local government meetings must be open to the public, as I mentioned. But we have virtual meetings. We were using Facebook Live, and we have now moved to our YouTube channel. So you'll be able to follow out. A lot of people are not on Facebook. So YouTube is not. Um, you don't have to have an account to watch things that are on there, and um, it, it eliminates the segment of our population who were not um, Facebook community members. Journalists often attend and report on our meetings. Um, sometimes they're sitting in the back, sometimes listening on Zoom or um, through the um, YouTube or Facebook in the past meetings and reporting. For the various different services and departments, I've listed them here. Some of the individuals are elected individuals at like uh, commissioners are elected and some are um, hired or appointed individuals in a way. Um, so we have the register of deeds, uh, which is an elected official and they maintain the legal records of all property transactions and of all marriages, births, and deaths. So at some point, individuals come through the register of deeds, either it's purchasing a property, selling a property, or researching their family's history and trying to find information um, on property transactions over the past, or they're getting married, um, or they had the birth of a child, or they have to uh, come and request a death certificate for a loved one. Boards of elections, their um, registers voters and conducts elections. For the sheriff, which is an elected official, the sheriff operates a jail for people awaiting trial and people convicted of minor, minor crimes. And as you saw in the um, newspaper recently, Northampton County is in the process of securing the former Odom prison that will allow us to save money um, to avoid the building of construction of a new, new jail. And we're at the point where we actually did need um, a jail. So we are uh, elated at that potential for us to be able to avoid that cost and savings to and have that savings to our citizens. And of course, that happened with communication between uh, the Board of Commissioners and our, our local representatives to the state of North Carolina and the state officials. Emergency medical services, um, the, and as well as, that includes county and supporting volunteer agencies, such as the volunteer fire, volunteer EMT. And if you're interested in becoming either of those in Northampton County, our emergency management director, um, Mr. Tony Burnett would love to talk to you and have his individuals that support those agencies within his department to um, help you in securing the necessary training that you might need in order to, um, to join those agencies. Social services, public health, mental health services, public school funding. We provide the funding for schools, but we do not uh, control the schools. They have a separate board um, that handles all of their um, day-to-day -day as far as their, their superintendent, as well as their um, policies and things of that sort. So we only provide the funding, uh, part of the funding 
for our public schools. They serve as a special kind of corporation with the power to own property and to levy taxes. And as you've seen, we are one, as far as what one of my passions is trying to reduce the strain on our property owners by um, increasing more business so we can have more sales tax to help operate our county versus depending upon property taxes and uh, having that burden on our citizens alone. Additionally, we're responsible for community colleges, court facilities, and youth detentions. And we are also in the process of building a new courthouse, uh, which as well has been um, a source of a lot of concern for us as far as when you have any tall buildings, you have a lot of bat issues. So the age, the security in the, the facility that was built in the 1800s, and it's not the first or only courthouse that has existed in Northampton County, but it is the most recent and the most notable, as you'll see even on our, on our um, seal, it's the most notable structure within our county. Here are the list of the different departments that exist within Northampton County. As you'll see, we have everything from aging to veteran services. And within all of those departments, there are um, positions that are, and I'll, and I'll share the listing of our vacancies. There are positions that exist for um, everyone from the, the housekeepers to the directors. And there are uh, administrative supports, Again, if you'll see those lists there, many people can find something that they connect with. Although we're a county form of government, sometimes there are overlaps in the things that we do. A municipality are those that you might consider to be your town or your cities. Um, so within the city limits, the municipalities are responsible for a lot of things such as their local police, um, the sheriff department handles the county areas, but they also can support the municipalities. But the, um, the chiefs of police or police officers within the city limits tend to be those who um, support the, the safety, public safety of those citizens within there the most closest. Um, we also work with airports. We have a new airport over in the Ahoski area uh, that Northampton is also a part of, the Hertford and Northampton Airport. But we also work with the airport authority on the Halifax County Inn as well. There are many different ones. I won't list, I won't read them all to you, um, but even down to parks and recreation. And we are increasing recreation within our community so that we can have somewhere for our citizens to enjoy the great outdoors or to become physically fit from the Eastern end of our county to the Western end of our county. We are a very wide land rich county. Um, so we have to make sure that we make it accessible to our citizen. And we also have an aging population in order for them to take advantage of many of the services that we provide. Um, we have to sometimes bring those uh, services to them. Uh, with our health department, we actually purchased a mobile a trailer, a unit that could actually take, and it was equipped to be able to take the most uh, sensitive of the, the vaccinations, the ones that require the uh, deep freeze almost. And we, we equipped it so that we can take that within our community to um, provide the services as close to our citizens as possible. What you have listed here are our current vacancies that exist in our county as of today. These are listed on our county webpage. Again, if you go back to getting and use that QR reader, you can visit or you can Google Northampton County Local Government and you can see all of these positions that exist. And the salary ranges are also posted. So everything from $14 an hour to uh, 105, uh, basically $106,000 a year. Um, so there are a lot of, a lot of uh, positions that are available. And we hope that if you are interested in working in Northampton County, that you will stop by and um, pay attention to our webpage, make a call to our HR director. Our offices are open, but if you would like to sit down and talk to our HR director, I just would recommend that you make an appointment. That way you can ensure that he's in the office and not at a meeting on the day that you would like to come by. 
Um, Mr. Edwards, I think I've gone through our presentation uh, as it stands and the parts that you would like to add, if you would open your mic up at this time, if you're able to, I will uh, mute my mic so that you can. Thank you, Vice Chair um, Faulkner. And so you've seen some of the wonderful things that we in local government are um, governing and, and overseeing. And I just like to echo that what Ms. Uh, Vice Chair said, that it, it's a, a total team effort. You know, one of the things there's a, there's a saying, there is no I in team. And we as a group of commissioners, even though you look at District 1, District 2, District 3, District 4, and District 5, yes, we represent our different districts, but you heard Ms. Faulkner say we are elected officials. Yes, we have a district that we're responsible for, but the total citizenry also votes for these positions. And we come together to make um, sound decisions on tax dollars provided by citizens. You saw the um, governmental entities that um, we are responsible for in local government. And I, I'd like to also add that you know, us coming together as a, a group of commissioners often reminds me of a great quote. Today is the opportunity to build the tomorrow that you want. And looking at our strategic plan that Vice Chair Faulkner spoke of, that is the tomorrow that we desire in Northampton County, a strategic plan. So when you're looking at businesses and entities, I encourage you to look at the mission statement they have, the vision statement they have, the strategic plan that they have. These are documents that tell you what that entity is all about, what they aspire to do, and how they plan to do it. And looking at this team effort, we do have um, Commissioner Nicole Boone, who is on as a, a participant with us today. And on last evening, we have been struck by something called uh, the pandemic for over a year now. And on last evening, our uh, local government received an award from Halifax Community College, the Bridge Builder Award for efforts in this pandemic. You saw the health department listed. You, you saw different entities of EMT. You saw different entities of the sheriff's department. These are people that have been on the front line without the opportunity to be disengaged from work because they provide goods and services to citizens. So if you break down what we do in local government, it's those two statements I just said. We do provide the goods and services to citizens. Social services is a component that we um, oversee here in local government. But that is the bottom line of what we do. Um, there are, I always say, in North Carolina, you know, it's called being college and career ready, college and career ready. So when you're out there looking for careers and that current vacancies, they're still up on the screen right now. Look to your local government and see what opportunities there are out there for you. Health department, EMS, social services positions, public works. Uh, one of the main things is providing good, safe, clean water daily that they um, local government is responsible for. A collective effort together is how we come together to make a better um, environment for all citizens in Northampton County. And not only we say Northampton County, you heard Vice Chair Faulkner talk about how we have to join forces. So we don't have an airport in Northampton County, but again, right next to us, we have an airport in Hereford County. And so we look to Hereford County when we have airplanes come in and we help provide so that they can have that airport. So this is a, a great example of what local government does. And when you look at what we are here to do, it is one word, we are here to serve. Serve the citizens of the county that we govern. And with, with that said, Ms. Faulkner, Vice Chair, I'll turn it back over to you. I thank you, Dr. Edwards, Commissioner Dr. Edwards. I have to make sure I put the commissioner and the doctor in there. Um, and I know that there might be a variety of age ranges that might be uh, listening to this presentation, either live or um, on the replay. But anything that you do, 
local government tends to have some part in it in your day-to-day -day life. When you go to turn on your water, and uh, although there are some people who are not on county water, but the majority, and we're working on those who are not, when you turn that faucet, you want the, the um, safe drinking water. And we're responsible for that. Um, when something happens, you want to know that there's a, a sheriff department that you can go to to um, answer your call. And you, when, when something happens in terms of a fire, we have some wonderful volunteers within our county and we can't do what we do without our volunteers and our citizens, such as the men of Galatia Baptist when we had that um, that tornado that came through our county a few weeks ago. Um, without a call, they, they answered the call um, to come to help their fellow citizens. And that's the type of, that's the type of family environment. And it's, it's Northampton, it's not just a slogan, it's a great place to live and work and raise a family. When you have people that pull together in your time of need, that shows that you have a community that is about community. And as commissioners, we're, we're responsible for helping to try to develop that sense of community by providing the services and supports. If, if, you, if, if you are um, in the need of any services at, at DSS, we need to make sure that you have, we, we are streamlining in some areas because we, a lot of things are becoming um, digital and um, you can service them in a different way, but it doesn't mean we're limiting our services to our citizens. We're not going to streamline anything at the cost of citizen supports. So a lot of people are, we're diversifying and we're changing up the way that we do business in Northampton because over time in the 1700s, we can't operate the way that we did in 1700s. We can't operate the way that we did in 2000. And to be honest, we can't operate and have not been operating the way that we were operating in 20, uh, 2018. Um, the pandemic has caused us to really look at doing things more efficiently, more effectively, so that our citizens and those, again, that come through our county, not just those who live here, but those who become a part of our community just by nature of uh, visiting Lake Gaston, um, coming to our shooting range. We have a beautiful shooting range over by where Odom Prison was. So there's a lot of resources and a lot of the growth that we're planning in our county. If you have not seen our strategic plan, please take a look. Um, a lot of people say it was very ambitious, but you cannot go anywhere if you don't shoot for the best. And that's what we want for our citizens. We can't move our county if we continue to just do things the status quo. Uh, it takes a lot of work. Um, but we're committed to doing that as citizens and uh, as county commissioners uh, for our citizens. Again, the decisions that we make are not about what our municipality might want. It's about what's best for the entire citizenry of Northampton County. And we are committed to serving all of our citizens from the youngest to the oldest, from those who have money to those who need us to support some basic needs. All citizens are equally important in our eyes and we value each and every one. Um, I will take a question, we'll take questions at this time if there are any. And again, thank you for having us um, on your platform today to share a little bit about local government and things that we're doing in Northampton County specifically. Vice Chair Fulton, I do wanna take this opportunity to say to everyone that you know, behind every great team, there's leadership or, or with every great team, there's leadership. And, and and being in local government and county commissioners is, is no different. Uh, we as a group of county commissioners, we are led by um, two people. It would be Mr. Reverend, Reverend Charles Tyner, and um, you see our vice chair, um, Commissioner Faulkner. They are the leaders of the county commissioners. They are the spokespersons for the county commissioners because when you look at a, a well-structured and a well-run organization, it, it has a chair and a vice chair and we come together collectively as the team. But that's just another component that I like to stress when it comes to leadership. And we appreciate the leadership that Vice Chair Faulkner and, and Chair Tyner do with us each and every day in working with the county government. So thank you. Well, we want to uh, give our commissioners a applause. We applaud you, thank you so much for that valuable information, what we call, you call it uh, uh, local government 101. And we really feel like we have a better understanding of uh, local government. As uh, 
Commissioner Vice Chair of uh, Rick Faulkner has said, uh, this is a time uh, for you to ask any questions that we might you might have. We'd like for you to, at this time uh, put any questions that you have in the chat. Uh, we will be able to uh, collect those, and uh, we will begin to uh, ask some, our panelists some questions. Uh, the first question that I have here is to uh, dur during the presentation, you put up a, a, a slide that had a list of the different types of, of roles or jobs that were available. Uh, so this question is related to that. It says, uh, please describe what occurs in the, the day reporting center. In the day reporting center, uh, that's when individuals either are on probation or have some other reason why they have to come in and uh, meet with an individual at a certain time. Um, so usually it is uh, people who are on probation. Thank you. Our next question comes from uh, Kemp. Says, um, how are boards of commissioners uh, chosen and at what age can a person run for office? Um, we listed the different districts that are supported. So when a office is, or one of those district positions, the term expires. Uh, if you're 18 or older and you live within the district that the vacancy or the new uh, term would start, you would go to the Board of Elections, which is one of those departments that we listed there, and you would file to run for the office. There's a little bit of paperwork, not a lot, um, just basically to certify, you know, where you live, are you registered um, as a, are you running as a Democrat, or Independent, or Republican, or any of the other parties that you're able to run for. And during the primary, you would run against um, as far as on the ballot against any other citizen within that district who also put in to either be reelected or to run for election. Um, so all of you would be on the ballot for your specific district. Once you're on the ballot, again, remember you have to be 18. Once you're on the ballot, uh, then the citizens at large would vote on all vacancies. In Northampton County, we have uh, two districts that are available at uh, for um, term expiration at one time, and then the other set is three. So at any given time over a two year period, every two years, there is either a two seat um, term expiration or three seat term expiration. You just have to live within the uh, district in which the term expiration is in and it's voted on at large. Thank you. Next question is from Sarah. Uh, any suggestions on how uh, students can be more active uh, in their community? Absolutely. We have a lot of uh, boards that operate underneath the board of commissioners. So even down for a, a recreation board, um, and, I, and I'm gonna, Back, step back a little bit. When I ran for office, everyone before had either been a retired person or a person who was at the point of retirement. So they were um, they were seniors or at that point of being considered a senior citizen. And the time frame in which our board meetings happened, which probably a deterrent for working citizens, working citizens to run for offices or uh, to sit on boards, um, because we had a meeting in the middle of the day, a 12 o'clock and then a six o'clock. But I was the youngest uh, board of commissioner at the time in which I ran, I was the, the youngest. And now we have Commissioner Boone, who was actually one of my students at Conway Middle School. So now she is the youngest serving board of commissioners. So if you're 18, please don't let your age deter you. If you have something of value to bring 
to our county. There are many boards. You can contact our clerk to the board, Ms. Tanya uh, Shonda in, um, in, in Jackson. Or if you look on our webpage, again, that was listed in that QR reader on the first uh, page, there are so many different boards, again, uh, that, that serve the ABC board, the um, and we have so many citizens that are serving on multiple boards because we're trying to encourage more citizens to be active and involved. Please don't let that, your age, as long as you're 18, stop and live in Northampton County, stop you from um, sharing your expertise. And again, there are, you can apply and check off many different boards that you might be interested in. And as a vacancy comes open, Ms. Shonda pulls those. You can also do it online. You don't have to send a paper copy. You can do it online. Um, so that's how you can be involved. Otherwise, just come into our meetings, either virtually or when we start back face-to-face -face and sharing your thoughts in the public comments or just listening, being aware of what's happening in go local government to share with your your friends, your family members, is a wonderful way to be an advocate for your county, as well as to be very informed about what's happening. Thank you, and uh, Mike has a similar question. Uh, it's related to part-time employment uh, for students who work in local government. Uh, and are any of those part-time opportunities available after five, or on the weekends uh, while so while our student is still in in school, high school. While they're still in high school, we we are starting an apprenticeship program, an internship program. Um, we uh, went through that phase with our local human resource director that uh, started that new policy, so that we can have both paid and unpaid internships available for our students. Our county government, there. If you look at the list there. There are many different areas that operate 24 hours a day, seven days a week. And um, so I would encourage you, if you're interested in something that's after hours, uh, to speak with our local a um, human resource director, I like to say HR, but human resource uh, director, and see what types of internships are departments looking for that would be an evening or a weekend availability. Just off the top of my head, I know the emergency management area, they are 24 hours a day, seven days a week. There's always someone on call. Whether it's a paid or unpaid, it will vary depending upon, I guess, the department and how they have it set up within their budgets. But that would be an encouraging uh, way for you to be involved. Thank you. This question comes from Ashante. Uh, what are the biggest challenges uh, confronting the county commissioners? Um, I'll say a couple, Ms. Dr. Edwards might have a few other on the top of his mind. I think uh, one, it is um, healthcare and providing an urge at minimum, an urgent care facility within our county that uh, our citizens can go to. We, um, we don't have a stabilizing facility that will help a citizen in need. Uh, our local emergency management, they um, EMT, they do a wonderful job with what they have on their uh, on their uh, ambulances, but we need a facility within our county. We have been working on this for, um, and this is one of Dr. Edwards's passions, and he came on board speaking healthcare, healthcare, healthcare. We need facilities within our county, um, and we don't have a hospital within our county lines, and uh, we don't have an urgent care within our our county lines that service the broad uh, part of our community. Yes, there are some in neighboring counties, but when you look at citizens who live out in Severn, who live out in uh, the log, the, the uh, farthest part of the Conway Woodland area, it's a long ride and it's a long way for people to get to, um, to your home to, to help you. So uh, if you can get to, if the EMTs can take you to a facility that can stabilize you, that would help us greatly. So. Healthcare is one. Um, another is, just like all other communities, financially with, with the pandemic, um, people are hurting and, and we are thankful for our citizens who continue to pay their property taxes. And actually they pay them at a higher rate 
um, than the, as far as like uh, actually paying on time and, and paying them than they had been before the pandemic, even through the struggles they were doing their civic duty. But we want to take that burden off of our citizens. Um, you can't completely take it off, but to at least bring our tax um, rate uh, down so that there's less burden on our citizens who are trying to do, you know, those who pay are the ones who, who, who sometimes are our seniors and they're taking some of their last um, to do that. And we want to really reduce that, that burden on them. Always economic development. We're trying to, to uh, market our county that we are open for business as Chairman Tyner would say all the time. We need, we need more housing. We are working on rooftops, whether that's buildings for businesses or buildings for uh, residential. So uh, that's, that's some of our challenges is um, in rural America, just trying to get business and industry that's competitive, that will have high skill or at least high wage um, positions that our citizens could actually have for, um, for employment. So uh, those are my, my things. Uh, Dr. Edwards, again, he may have another view there. Thank you, Vice Chair. And I do echo, and, and like um, Vice Chair Faulkner said, healthcare, healthcare, healthcare. And also, this pandemic has brought about a, a new way that we can do business. You know, there's still something out there called the digital divide. The digital divide is simply put, those who have access to technology versus those who do not have access to technology. Now, look at what has happened over this last year with this um, monster coming into all of our lives called um, COVID-19. Uh, for the first time in, 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 in my life, in, in many lives, uh, a place called school ha ha has been shut down with only remote instruction. And so here in Northampton County and Halifax County and all surrounding counties, um, something happened that has never happened before. It affected the Halifax Community College. Students were not in the building. And in Northampton County, students have not been in, in a building in over one year. Um, schools just opened this month to deliver face-to-face -face instruction. So this, this pandemic has affected all our lives and brought to the forefront an even more crucial component of why the digital divide is so crucial. And I put it in perspective, traveling only 92 miles from, from Northampton County, and I gotta say that that's from the Western end, because if you go on the Eastern end, you're traveling uh, approximately 100, um, 12 miles or 20 miles to get to Wake County, which is Raleigh, North Carolina. In Raleigh, North Carolina, what I see uh, on my um, on those LTE bars, as, as students would say, um, I see five bars. That means you have a good signal. But when I'm traveling throughout Northampton County, oftentimes on the LTE bar side, I see one bar. Many times traveling on 301, 186, and I'm speaking of Seaboard and, and Pleasant Hill, Margaretsville area, as soon as you make a turn, your cell phone signal cuts off. Now we generated hotspots to provide services for technology to students, but generally speaking, hotspots are only as good as the signal. So one of the things that we are constantly pushing as commissioners is how can we get partners to close the digital divide? Because going back to healthcare, you know, there are things called teleappointments that people, citizens, don't have to travel because. Northampton County is a, is a county about 78.6 miles long, plenty of land, but now if you don't have to travel and can have the same doctor's appointment with this connectivity, closing the digital divide, how convenient is that for citizens to get the same services without having to travel? So the digital divide is also a component that we're looking at. Also, when you look at mental health, I have to say it, mental health is a big issue in any community and area. And we're working with Trillium to try to help mental health um, issues within the county so that we can provide necessary, necessary components to make mental patients who suffer from mental health a, a good service. 
So in conjunction with what Vice Chair Faulkner say, those are some of the things that I see, um, just like economic development she mentioned. And also we, we're looking at ways that we can just make overall life better for citizens here in Northampton County. Thank you, Vice Chair. Thank you all for those responses to, to those questions. We have a couple of viewers who have a similar question, so I'm going to try to put it together. Uh, the, um, the their questions is around uh, the decline in um, residents in Northampton County, and and in Northeast North Carolina in general, and they're wanting to know um, what can the commissioners do or what are commissioners doing uh, to lighten the tax burden for residents uh, by uh, attracting more businesses uh, to the community to generate more revenue and in hopes that maybe it would lighten the burden, the tax burden for uh, residents? One of the big things that our Board of Commissioners started uh, about two years ago was the support of small business and entrepreneurship in our county. It has shown based upon our last audit to have been a wonderful, wonderful step for our county. Um, we had a county seat without a grocery store. We did not have a, a dry cleaners within the county. Um, we actually were able to recruit some businesses that were in other counties, neighboring counties who came over to Northampton because the rent in some of the downtown um, storefronts was a lot cheaper and they were able to do their work from a different location within our county. So we're starting to um, not only develop who, we, who we're going to be as a county and try to market ourselves out to uh, large businesses who are looking for, some are looking for that off the beaten path um, type of location to either have, buy a facility and retrofit it or to build a facility. Remember I said, we're land rich. Um, so we have the facility and we're starting to work on our land and use um, documents and to provide a little bit more flexibility that's available by law to our um, to our business and partners and, and citizens who are looking to build and expand in our county. So one of the things was small business ownership and um, providing small business grants, small business loans, very low interest loans to people who it's hard when you're trying to do a startup. Um, because you don't have the, the evidence of being successful because you're just starting. And some banks are hesitant to, to lend. So uh, we have been able to work with citizens who have shown that they, they have a good plan, that it's something that fits the needs of our citizens, and that they're um, putting some, some personal stock in, um, in developing those. So we've had restaurants that have opened, as I mentioned and the other businesses that have opened, some that you might not see on, um, on the store, on the, the, um, the town um, front streets, but they're there. And that's, that's been a, a welcome advantage for our county as far as our tax base. Um, and again, our, our last audit, if you review our last session where our auditor came and gave that, we're in a good place to be able to, um, to start again releasing we've already reduced our taxes um, previously when we came together as a part of our strategic plan and we're going to continue to do that um, at recruiting our young people to come back and recruiting businesses sometimes you could offer incentives um, such as we have we have buildings within our county and if which the grocery store was an incentive we the grocery store was on the market and was up for auction and as a board of county commissioners we came together and said you know no one's biting you know people were talking but no one is coming together are we willing to invest in this building and use that as a uh, as a um an incentive for someone to come in and to actually we would, we didn't want to be in the grocery store business but we knew we needed one in our county seat um, we have them in, in other communities, but we did not have one in our county seat. And it was a very large vacant building. Um, so we did that. And that was a low cost incentive to be able to, um, to bring that in 
for a business owner to um, to take advantage of that. So we're not looking at giving away um, hundreds of thousands of dollars to um, to businesses anymore to come into Northampton County. Um, so we are looking at smaller um, businesses and organizations who are wanting to, even if it's land that we have that we're not using, that's really surplus possibly kind of land to use that and working with our townships to um, to look at buildings that they have because of either um, tax collection or people have donated the building to their towns, but they don't know what to do with them to use those and to have them on the market. Um, our economic development department um, chaired by uh, Reverend um, Franklin D. Williams, and he actually now has uh, another person that comes to him from South Carolina bringing a young person, bringing a lot of years of, of experience in economic development and writing grants and things like that, that are going to help our county. So we're looking at all opportunities of state money that exists. And we have, we have with our chairman and our economic development uh, director going to Raleigh and speaking to these people, they're really interested. We are positioned in, in Northampton County. We are, we are the south of the border. We have land at south of the border. So we're looking at ways to market our south of the border um, to start building that up. And um, there are a lot of businesses that wanna take advantage of that 95 corridor that has become congested in many other areas. And we are ripe for the opportunity. Um, building houses, remember I said rooftops, uh, we are working with, um, contractors and developers. Again, we're not looking to be in a rental agency, but we are working with contractors and developers to continue to build up and provide affordable um, housing for, for the working class. Um, so, and, and to make it a place where it's close to places where people with children, because we need more young people in order for our school system to grow, we need more school aged children. So providing that recreation for families, um, providing it close to um, where people live and working with our citizens on if, you know, if, if you have a home, let's not let it sit down and, and go to waste, make it available to people so that we can start getting some of these people back. With so many businesses now going to completely all online work, Northampton with its cost of living is a prime place to recruit people who wanna be close to the water. I mean, I've seen um, Northampton and the lake on national television with people looking for lakefront property. So we, we do have, and not that we have a whole lot of lakefront property for, for sale, but we do have people who want to be close to the water, but maybe not all the way at the ocean. Um, with the, the cost of living. So we, we just have to change the way we market our ourselves and reimagine like Kinston did. Kinston reimagined itself. And if you look at Kinston now, if you have not followed it, there's it's like an artsy community. So change the whole view, but you have to be strategic and you have to plan for that. Thank and you. Like and I want to thank I'm and sorry, I'd like to add, Dr. Elam, and, and, and to everyone listening, and, and, you know, especially that part about bringing uh, young, young people back, um, young, younger professionals back home. And, and when you look at bringing younger professionals back home, I echo what Vice Chair Fulton said, you know, that's why it was important for us to show you that current list of vacancies. Because, you know, when you have these great minds go off um, to, to um, be in college and career ready on these campuses, you know, um, they see the bright lights of Raleigh, Greensboro, Charlotte, and, uh, uh, whatever, uh, wherever they decide to go to college, or even uh, maybe a career in the military. But, you know, coming back home, that's what Commissioner Faulkner was speaking about, you know, opportunities to be employed. And that's how we feel we can bring our bright minds back. And, and just like you heard about I'm Commissioner Faulkner's children, my children as well. My children go, uh, when well, my daughter went to the early college, Northampton Early College, my son is a senior at Northampton Early College now. Can we get them bright minds to come back with opportunities? We as a commission board feel we can. And I think that's why that's imperative when you talk about coming back, we have to have um, some gainful employment for, to, to attract those great minds back. 
We want to thank you both for, for that. And I want to thank uh, Tyron and Damien and, and uh, Sinclair for, for that questions. And they, they each had a question and all of, I think you've answered all three of their questions in that one. We have one more area uh, with a couple questions in there and I'm going to try to combine it and then uh, we can close out. But um, Antonio and Darius are, are asking a similar question about the pandemic. And um, <clears throat> their concern is with Northampton County, uh, uh, how has Northampton County worked to vac vaccinate all its citizens? And uh, with, uh, with many questions or citizens questioning the safety of the vaccine, and uh, has that led to some uh, difficult leadership issues uh, during the pandemic for the commissioners? Um, as I mentioned earlier, one of the things we did was to um, purchase the mobile unit that could actually take the vaccination stations into the community. Uh, we partnered with local towns, um, local organizations to help get the word out. I think some of it was uh, lack of information that was causing some people to not go and get vaccination vaccinated. Some, it was the fact of having to be in Jackson by a certain time and their ability to get there during the work week, that was a problem. So our health department just, they just flipped the script. They, they started vaccinating on Saturdays. They would stay and if you were, if you needed to get there at 5.30, they would stay and, and vaccinate you at 5.30 if you just communicated and talked with them. I can't say enough of how working with our health director, working with other health professionals within our county and within our region, um, such as Rural Health Group, um, such as Biden, uh, they, they have done a wonderful job of really working with us. I think one of the things um, on my personal page, and I can say for, for me, um, as a county commissioner, I, I keep my county commissioner um, and some people might say it's like a candidate page, but it's not a candidate page. I use it to keep my citizens informed who may not go to the local county government page. Um, so I'll share, like, here are the facts. Here's what's coming from CDC. Here is how I'm doing, and I've been fully vaccinated. Here's how my family is doing, and they've been fully vaccinated. Here are the falsehoods. And I have people that I know closely um, that, that they are still nervous. Um, and it's simply because of uh, things that have happened in the past and many years in the past and their lack of trust in government completely. Uh, but having people that they know and trust like Dr. Elwoods, Commissioner Boone, Commissioner Buffalo, Commissioner Tyner, myself, um, and, and people who work within the health department, having them to actually say, look, you know, I know you're hearing some things and we can't stop the, the false information, the disinformation that's out there, but we can tell you what we know personally. We can tell you what the facts are. And when we start to see that our black and brown communities, we're not getting a vaccination at a sufficient rate. Not only were, were we seeing it, the State um, Department of Public Health did a, a, a research on all communities all marginalized communities. And they started to send in specifically more vaccination just to make sure that it wasn't because of quantity that we were um, not able to serve the black and brown community. So they started designating uh, some, and then with the more vaccinations being produced, are, we are able to make sure that no vaccination goes unused. There's, we, we find arms, we communicate with people, look, you need to, you need to go sharing it on um, on social media, calling people, have you been vaccinated? So that personal attention in rural community is very important. People might see advertisements and people might see posts, but those phone calls and that urging through text messages, have you been? Is there a reason why? Is there a time of a day that works better for you? Like the gentleman that worked, gentleman, um, um, that worked at the shipyard. You know, they didn't get off the, the van. They go in early and they didn't get off the van until a certain time. And they're like, okay, during the week is really hard. Saturday works better for us. Um, so we're able to try to coordinate those things. And if we didn't have 
um, a vaccination, a mass vaccination clinic, if you will, going on. If there was one at HCC, we've uh, we pushed them, you know, your direction. So um, nurse, uh, I believe she's a nurse, uh, Dawn Daly Matt. Uh, she keeps us informed if there's anything going on. People from the Hereford County Inn will say, if you have any citizens, we have a clinic going on, let them get here. Uh, Rural Health Group has done a great job with their web page. Um, so we, especially when it opened up to 18 and older, uh, when it took away that, that age limit, even down to all of our school district employees, anyone that works in the school system or comes in close contact um, such as our contractors, um, our board attorney, anyone that comes in contact with people who work or students in our school district was able to get vaccinated, fully vaccinated, um, if they so desired. So there was no requirement, but we just urged people to be safe and to keep, you know, to keep their coworkers and their students safe. So we've just done everything that we could to encourage our communities to, um, to get vaccinated by using the power of, they voted us in. So obviously there's a trust factor that exists in our county for the commissioners who are elected. So we try to use that as our voice to encourage our citizens. Thank you. And we wanna thank Antonio and Darius for, for that uh, question. And uh, we wanna also thank our, our panelists for uh, coming together and uh, giving us the passionate uh, presentation uh, and informative uh, presentation regarding uh, government, local government 101. Thank you all for your, for your uh, information, for your service, and uh, we appreciate you and being with us today. Uh, as, um, at this time, I would also like for Ms. Mack to come back to the podium uh, for some closing remarks and announcements. And uh, we, uh, we will close uh, after that. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Elam. Thank you to everyone that attended this lecture series today virtually and for those who are going to be watching it later on. A special thanks goes to our program participants, commissioners, Edwards and Riddick Faulkner. We really appreciate the information that you brought to us today discussing local government 101 from the career opportunities to the different departments and just learning more about how local government functions. I think it would be really helpful um, being able to know that information because many of our students, some of our students do remain in the community. I also want to thank the Global and Diversity Committee for helping organize the ceremony. Caroline and Timmy Archer for technology and program support. We appreciate you. On May 15th, we will be having our virtual graduation. Pre-activities will begin at 10 a.m. and the actual ceremony will begin at 12 noon. So be on the lookout for that link on our webpage on the May 15th, the morning of our graduation. We look forward to seeing you again at one of our many cultural learning and universal enrichment programs and events. This was our last lecture series of this academic year. So we look forward to sharing with you more activities when we come back and return this fall. Enjoy the rest of your day and be safe. And this concludes our program today. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you for having us. If the participants can stay on for a few minutes, um, we get ready to stop the recording. <laughs>